my name is AJ Pruitt and I am the author of Anathalian and in this video and the next few videos I want to explore the depths of my favorite quotes on, in Anathalian and so in this video I'm going to do my favorite quote in the whole entire book my most favorite quote so first I want to read this wonderful quote to you okay so it's on page 240 no tad when the end comes, the hero is not the man who has answers or who is skilled above, above others. The hero is the man who disregards himself. The man who forgets his own inability, pain, fear, and rage, and considers those around him. The one willing to see everyone else's inability, feel their pain and fear, and yet stand in their place. To be a hero, Tad, you must be a shield for others. You must be the very thing that stands between a people and death and stabs back that death. Sacrifice makes a hero. So when I read that quote, or when I first wrote that quote, I just, I remember after I was, I was like, wow, God, that is like, that's so deep and it so beautifully illustrates kind of what, kind of what the Bible is all about, about Jesus being the sacrifice for us. But, <laughs> close my book. Um, and how that, that's the, the ultimate hero. But I want to kind of break it down a little bit more than just that that simple one thing and so that first part the hero is not the man who has answers or who is skilled above others if you're like me you often feel like you don't have the skills you don't have the talents you don't have things that usually qualify people to be heroes to be with these really amazing people and that quote right there you don't have to have the answers you don't have to be skilled above others it's very reassuring and the bible teaches us that God chooses the weak. In 1 Corinthians 1 27, let me find that. I got my Bible. 1 Corinthians 1 27, it says, Instead, God has chosen what is foolish in the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chooses us when we're weak. God chooses us when we don't really know what we're doing in order to shine through us how great and powerful He is. Um, I tell my Sunday school class I teach a lot that like it's amazing that I stand up there and talk because I I have extraordinary anxiety of talking in front of people, of talking to people. If you meet me in public, I probably just will forget my words and just stare at you like a three-headed fish, you know? But but when I get up there to teach, I always pray and I always prepare and I always like God lead me and like words come out. And that's God using this inability of me to show how powerful he is. That he can do that with me. Something that I'm unable to do. Showing he can do that and how powerful he is to just enable us to do whatever he wants to do his will. So God uses the weak. We don't have to be able. We don't have to know it all. We just have to be willing to be used by God. So that's why, I, that's part of why I love that quote. Um, oh, and also... Another part of that, how we don't have to be skilled or have the answers. Jesus doesn't call us to be the greatest. He tells us to not strive to be the greatest. In Matthew 20, that's Mark, Matthew 20, Matthew 20, 25 through 28. Let me see. But Jesus called them over and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles dominate them, and the men of high positions exercise power over them. It must not be like that among you. On the contrary, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And so that verse connects to the rest of this quote that I love so much in Anathalian. Um, well, let me do this middle part. The hero is the man who disregards himself, the man who forgets his own inability, pain, fear, and rage, and considers those around him. So being a hero, as it said in the Bible, it doesn't require skill. What it requires is to choose to see the people around you, to disregard yourself. That's the point I want to focus on now. The hero is a man who disregards himself. God never asks us to be the best at anything. Jesus tells us that to follow him, we have to give up our life, disregard ourself. Um, let me see. In Mark 8, 36... 836 Jesus says 
For what does it benefit a man to gain the whole world yet lose his life? What can a man give in exchange for his life? For whoever's ashamed of me... Okay, I read too much. Focus on the 35. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me and the gospel will save it. Saying that if you try to keep your life, if you try to keep it together, if you try to take care of number one, it's not going to work out. But if you give up your life to God and say, I serve you with my life, God gives you life and you save your life. And so that is part of what it takes to be this, this hero, this great person, to give up your life and do what God wants because he's great, we're not great. Um, and, and also taking up our cross, you may have heard that expression, Luke 9, 23, I think this is the marker for that one, nope, Luke 9, 23, here we go, Luke 9, 23, he said to them all, if anyone wants to come with me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And then we have the verse, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me will save it. Jesus said, give up your life. Give up your life for, for me to follow me and do what I tell you to do, to serve God. That's how we gain our life. That's how we become a hero, serving God. And so the last part of this quote that I love so much. Um, well, first I want to say, that, that that second part, those those two verses I just read, it teaches how we have to give up more than we think give up our life. Okay, I'm going to serve God. But it, it teaches what it says in this quote, give up, forget your own pain, your own fear, and your own rage. Giving up our emotions is hard because we want to be mad at people. We want to, you know, pursue our dreams because that makes us happy. We want to pursue these emotions. But Zildor tells Tad and Jesus tells us in the Bible, you got to give up these emotions, you've got to give up what you want in order to become this hero who disregards yourself to be that shield for others. You must be the very thing that stands between a people and death and stabs back that death. Sacrifice makes a hero. So if you know like anything about Jesus, you know he died on the cross to take our sins, to be that sacrifice, to be that hero for us so we could have life. He stood between us and death and said, I'm going to take death so everybody can live and have that choice to live. And for us, it doesn't mean that. We don't die on a cross to save other people because Jesus already did that for everybody. So what do we do? What is Isildur telling Tad to do? Tad says, what, I have to die in the next sentence? And Isildur kind of explains it more. But the quote points to being the shield between people and death. So how do we do that? Um... God calls us to love our neighbor. Matthew twenty two thirty nine 39 has the golden rule, love your neighbor as yourself. That's the second greatest command. Loving God is the first. Um, it means giving up, like I've talked about a second ago, giving up your emotions, but also giving up your possessions and your security and your safety. The Good Samaritan in Luke 10, 23 through 37 teaches the story of how this man saw this other guy laying in the road and it was a road that was perilous it was a road with robbers but he stopped there exposed himself to the same possible fate as the man who had already been beaten and left for dead he exposed himself to that to take care of this man and that's what it means to love your neighbor you be that person who comes in and kind of shields someone else while exposing your back to all the arrows becoming that shield and taking whatever is necessary in order to show this person what God's love is really about. Um, we're supposed to, Jesus tells us to come alongside people and in Galatians 6, 2, do, 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 Galatians 6, 2, it tells us carry one another's burdens in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Not just helping people, but that emotional burden, carrying it with them, praying for them. That's how you take care of people and become that shield for people. When they have this heavy load on them, you come alongside them and take care of them and carry their burdens too. And also I have John 15, 13 for this idea. I think I know what this one is. If I can find it, John 15, 13. make my own music. 
John 15, 13 says, No one has greater love than this, that someone would lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus tells that to his disciples kind of when he's getting ready to go to the cross because he's going to lay down his life for his friends and that is love. And if we lay down our life for our friends, that's love. Not necessarily dying, but laying down our life to serve others, to tell others about God. And that's what it points to, to get other people to Jesus because we can't be the shield that takes death away from people but we can be that shield between the lies of the world and the lies of sin that says hey sin is great we can be that shield that says no this this is the truth and hold this up as the shield and show people the truth and let them see that instead of all the lies trying to come in and hit them instead that's how we lay down our life using our life to tell people the truth of God's Word and so we, we kind of participate in this plan to sacrifice ourselves, to give ourselves as servants of God, to help other people know God. And that's why I like that verse, or not verse, that's why I like that quote in Anathalian so much. It says, we don't have to have the ability. We just have to take Jesus' sacrifice to be our life. So we can be life to other people in the way of giving them, giving them that path toward God, being that shield between them in death and saying, this is the real truth. Listen to the real truth in God's word. Got down here. Listen to the real truth in God's word and accept this rather than all that death. And do that. It takes giving up stuff. It takes sacrificing what we want, but it is good. And that makes us a hero. Uh, not as awesome hero as Jesus, but it makes us a hero if we use our lives to get people to God. If we sacrifice our lives to get people to God. So that's my first favorite quote in Anathalian. Um, if you have a favorite quote in Anathalian, please put it in the comments below and I will talk about it in another video. If you have any more verses that that quote reminds you of, put it in the comments below. Or if you just have any comments, I like to have comments and interact with people and I want to know what you enjoy about my videos. So please comment, please like my video, P please please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I will see you next time with another quote. Bye for now. Hi, if you want to know more about Anna Thalian, please follow me on Instagram. Um, check out my Facebook page. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit my website at hapruitt.com. Thanks for watching.